In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the video events on our timeline, on these video clips and all the different options that we've got with them and how we can customize some of them and work it out. And as you can see at the moment, I've got one event above another and my cursor, my current time indicator, my playhead, whatever you want to call it, is right on the middle of the top one and all I can see in my video previews is the top event. This is because the top event is fully opaque, there's no transparency in it, I can't see through it in any way, shape or form, so all I can see before it is the previous clip, but when I come to that clip, all I can see is that clip. And I also have another clip in the middle of it which can be moved. It's an event I've dropped in the middle of it and I can still pull it around. Okay, and you notice that we've got these little icons. These icons are on this clip, the clip that's underneath, and this clip which is effectively on top. And I'm actually going to pull that out at the moment and move it separately. And now I want to zoom into this particular area so I can show you some of these features. Now, there are a couple of ways of zooming. One way of zooming is with this zoom bar at the bottom. So I can take the end of the zoom bar and pull it in. But you'll see when I get to a certain point, the playhead, the cursor goes off screen. And my zooming is not centered around my playhead. However, there is a zoom function that allows me to center around the cursor. And that's this plus and minus button here. So if I start clicking the plus button, you'll see that the cursor will get to the middle of my screen and then it will start zooming in on the cursor. And I can zoom right into the frame level. I'm just going to click and hold on the negative to go back out. I'll go back out all the way because the keyboard shortcuts to achieve the same thing are the up and down arrows on your keyboard. So if I click and hold my up arrow, it's going to zoom right in, down arrow, zoom back out again. And then I can see these two events, or these whole series of events, but these two events on this particular track side by side. Okay, so these are the events, and I've got these handles. I've got a handle here, a handle here, and a handle here. And I've got two little boxes at the bottom. Now, I'm only going to touch on these boxes at the bottom because they're going to have tutorials all to themselves. But we're going to have a closer look at what these handles do. This handle at the top is about changing the opacity of the clip. It's not about changing the opacity of all the clips. It's just about changing the opacity of this individual clip. And you can see at the moment it says opacity is 100%, which means you can't see through it. It's completely opaque. If I start to pull it down, and you look in the video preview monitor up here, you'll start to see that I can begin to see through. And at this point, I'm at 48% opaque. So it's over half transparent. And I can see half of the clip below. And I can pull it down altogether and make it completely transparent altogether so that I can only see the clip below. So you can actually adjust the opacity of an individual clip with this handle. So if you want to see through one clip to another clip, you can do that. However, this isn't animatable. There are other options to animate it, but that's actually done more on a track base rather than a clip base. And you need to realize that Sony Vegas does make a distinction between a track which has multiple clips in it. So there's two clips in this track at the moment and clips, which are individual events. And let's have a look at these handles here. These handles are about fading. So let's look at this first one. Just by clicking before this event, you can see the event below. And then when I hit the space bar to play, it goes through. And then it's a very sudden transition between the two. Now, if I hover over this handle, I get this sort of this arc, which tells me that I can fade. And you can see fade is set to 0, 0, 0. When I start to drag it, I can see and I can get a feedback for how long the fade is going to take. So at this point, it's a one second fade. So if you remember, time code is hours, minutes, seconds, frames. That's showing me that it's one second long. So when I now push the space bar, I'm going to fade over a second between this clip and this clip. There you go. We've faded between the two. If I want to make it longer, I can pull it out and make it longer. So let's have a look at a longer fade. which probably suits that footage a little bit better to have a longer fade. So you can play around with these fades as much as you like simply by going in and changing them. But there are even more options. At the moment, you look at the line. The line is telling you how it's fading. If you right click where you've still got that fade area there, you can see you've actually got different options for how this curve works. So we've got a very fast event arriving. So it's going to be a, invisible for a very short period of time and then come in very quickly. Or well, the exact opposite is going to be invisible for a long time and come in very slowly. This is the one that we've presently got. So let's look at this one where it comes in very slowly. Let's see the curve has actually changed. Hit the space bar to play. It takes a lot longer to actually go to the next clip. Let's look at the other alternative, which is the exact opposite. It's going to come in a lot quicker. 
comes in a lot quicker. So you can actually change the way these events work simply by going to when you've got the icon saying I can fade, right click and you've got the options there. If you find it difficult to get that by the way, if you get the clip itself right click, you'll see that you've got fade types actually at the top. You can change the fade types that you have. Okay, so that's how you can add fades. Now I can do the same to the end of the clip. If I go to the end of the clip, you'll see that I've actually got that option as well. And I can fade this clip in. And notice it's got a different fade type to this fade type. And I can still go in, make sure I get the right place, and change its fade type. And so they can be physically different. One can be different to the other. So I can have a different fade type at the end as at the beginning. But in actual fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the fade. Because what I want to do is I want to pull this clip over this clip to create a crossfade. So when I drag this clip over, notice at that point... I get a little purple or lavender or magenta mark which is saying you've reached a second which is the optimum period of time for a crossfade. I can still go further and make it longer but when I get that magenta line it's saying optimum level. So if I click here and play you'll see that I've got a crossfade between the two. Now that's a crossfade between the two items. Now if you right click on it you can actually have different types of crossfades. So we can see that we've got this type here where it stays high for a while and goes quickly to an end. But you can change the way these crossfades work. So you can have all kinds of different crossfades. So click this one here and push play. So that's more of a filmic crossfade. So you can just see, again, if you can't get that, you can actually go to the clip itself and you can choose whatever crossfade you like. So you can either get to where you've got the little crossfade or the little fade icon and then you'll get it here or if you struggle getting hold of that just go on the clip right click fade and you've got different kinds of crossfades that you can actually apply. I'm going to go back to the default which I think if I remember rightly was that one there and we'll stick with that one and that's the default clip crossfade. So you can create crossfades as simply as sliding one clip over the other one. And it's non-destructive. So if I was to move this clip completely over the top of this other clip, I haven't lost the data below. I can still play the clip and I'm going to end up with that type of look. I could have crossfaded this one in. You'll notice that I can crossfade it in. So I can still get a crossfade between the clips and I can actually crossfade it out as well. So I can crossfade in and crossfade out. So there's an awful lot I can do, or alternatively I can just drag the clip to the end and I need to undo these fades that I've actually created here and here. So you can see that there's an awful lot you can do to cross fade and move between these clips and you get great feedback telling you when you've reached the ideal place for a cross fade to start and stop, which is usually about a second, but of course the choice is entirely yours. Now the other items we've got, this one here is to do pan and crop, and when you click on it, You'll see I'm going to double click on this header here to set it out. And that's actually filled the whole screen. So I'm going to pull that out and hold the control key. And that's actually a little bit too big even for me. So I'm just going to pull that in a bit to make it a bit smaller. So there you go. That's a pan and crop. And again, I've done the same thing. So hold the control key to keep it from actually docking. If you don't want it to dock, I don't want it to dock. And we can actually pan and crop, which I'll do in a different tutorial, and even animate it. And the other button here is about adding effects. So if you click that one, you have the ability to be able to add effects. So if I wanted to add in something like, I don't know, what should we add in? We can add in, make, we can turn it into black and white. So I can select it and I can either add add or double click to add it in. It's added in an effect. You can have up to 32 effects, by the way. So I can add that in and click OK. And it's added in as an effect on the clip. If you want to get rid of it, by the way, you select it and hit this button to get rid of it. And if I want to see what it's like before and after, I can turn it on and off with this little checkbox here. And I can also blend it with the original to bring some color back in if I like. So I'm going to get rid of that at the moment and just exit off. So that's a quick look at the actual events and how we can fade them. On the audio events, you've simply got the ability to turn up and down the volume for the clip. It's called Gain. And when you pull gain down, you can take a clip and you can actually see the waveform has disappeared. So when I go up, you can see the waveform at its fullest. And then I can pull the waveform down for the individual clips. Now, you can change the opacity for a whole track and the gain for a whole audio track as well. But this is simply event-based or clip-based by playing with these handles to change the opacity and to change the 
volume or the gain of the individual clips. I hope you found this useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and in the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at some of the features down here in the timeline that help us to navigate a little bit better. Thanks for watching.